Hi, welcome back to BusyBots and welcome back to another MakerBot Quick Tips video. Today I want to talk to you about an upgrade for your printer, something you can build at home economically that will greatly enhance your print quality and that is a, an enclosure for your printer. Something to keep the warm air in and the drafts out to stop your prints from curling up and possibly even popping up off the build platform mid-print. The issue that we're addressing is the property of ABS plastic to shrink as it cools. And if you have, if you can, uh, here's a Raspberry Pi case, and you can imagine that if it's printed flat down on the on the build plate, and if it starts to cool and it starts to curl up, then we're not going to have a flat case anymore, and the mating pieces may not mate properly or at all. So we want to keep the drafts down to a minimum if at all possible. And those are drafts from possibly air conditioning, or a fan, or an open window, or someone walking by, or even yourself when you come and take a look you're introducing air currents that can affect the print. So best case scenario, you'll have the printer totally isolated from drafts in the room. What I'm going to show you here cuts down the vast majority of drafts and I find to be completely sufficient for my printing needs and hopefully it'll work for you as well. I'd like to point out that there's an excellent kit that you can order, have it delivered straight to your door for I believe around $125 or perhaps $150. And I haven't seen this myself, but I've seen it talked about quite a bit on Thingiverse and the MakerBot uh, operators group, the Google group. Um, and that looks like an excellent choice. If you want that, I'll put a link below so you can take a look. As I said, it's around $125. I've seen them selling them for $125 and $150, so please don't hold me into the price. But what I want to show you today, I put together for $22. And I felt that even though this is not as uh, elegant and not as professional looking, that um, it's sufficient for my needs. I'm not trying to win any beauty contests here with the enclosure, and I've got some more money for plastic, so why not? So let's take a look at the materials you'll need. This is .093 inch acrylic sheet. I purchased this at my local Home Depot. Hopefully you can find something near you, otherwise you can order the stuff online. This costs $4 per sheet for the 11 by 14 size, and you'll need two of these. These go great on the sides. You don't have to cut the height at all, just a little bit off of the width. You'll need two, one for either side. For the front, you need a sheet that's 18 by 24, and you will have to cut from the, the length from the side and also the top or the bottom. I chose to cut the bottom so that I had my nice clean edge on top, my nice factory edge Let me on show top. You how, the, how the panels come on and off. I'll pull a side panel off. And this is not held on by anything other than the alignment of these holes to the screw heads. And on the sides, there's also a row of screw heads here. There's one, two, three that the lower part of this sits on and then supports it. And if you're careful in the alignment of these holes, that's all you'll need. You don't need any additional clips or gizmos to hold this on there. I tend to not remove the sides very often at all, just the front. And so I've got a little different mechanism for the front to make it easier to take on and off. The front is held on by the same system with holes for all the bolt heads, but I also ran two bolts through the top that let it hang on the, the top edge of the MakerBot. And so it comes off just like this, and you can see I've got um, these two bolts that go through. Nothing special, doesn't matter what size, it's just anything at all that'll stick through and let it rest on top. And so to put this back on, it's easy. I just line it up like this and drop it on, and it's easy to get, to get in and out. Um, now, I elected to leave the corner here so that my, the button, the operator button, is, is covered during the printing. I thought that might keep any curious hands away from the button if I wasn't there. Uh, if you want to gain access to the button, then you can just notch out this corner and still block all the airflow. So uh, I've taken this off many, many, many dozens of times, I'm not even sure, and it works just fine. Uh, the part that caused me a little bit more research was to figure out the top, and I'll show that to you in a second. Before I show you the top, let me show you how to work with the acrylic. It's very simple. Just take your acrylic sheet, and you'll probably want to leave that protective... Uh, plastic on top of the acrylic and only peel it off when you're finished to reveal the nice surface finish. So hold your sheet up where you want to have it and then take a marker and put a spot everywhere that there's a bolt head. Once you have that then take the sheet off. I'm using a vice grip and a nail. You want the nail to be slightly smaller than the size of the bolt head. Heat the nail up till it's red hot I used the, uh, a, gas, uh, a gas stove. I just laid this in the kitchen and heated it up. 
you can use a little hand torch or perhaps even a lighter, I didn't try, and take it and pass it right through where those holes are. You can probably get three or four holes for uh, before you have to reheat the, the nail again. And you pass it through. Then I used this tool, which is a deburring tool. Take that tool, put it in each side, give it a few spins like this, it takes off the melted plastic edges. And that's it. To cut the plastic the size is very simple. You just need a way to score a, a surface line in the plastic and then put it on the edge of your table and you can snap it right off. What I used was a, um, I already had this, it's a carbide bit, it's used for etching. Uh, you can etch into, this is very hard, you can etch into metal, plastic, glass, anything with this. I used a square and a straight edge, scored the line a few times on the plastic, and then put it on the edge of the table, snapped it right off. Pretty easy stuff to work with. Just um, use a couple of clamps maybe, get a good straight edge, and um, spend a little time figuring out how to make a straight score line, and the, snap, the plastic will snap off very easily and give you a nice clean edge. I did use a little bit of sandpaper on there to make sure it didn't have any sharp edges. All right, now here's the time saver. This is the part that I spent the most time on, and that was finding the right size container to properly fit on the top. I'll save you the hassle. What you need is a Sterilite 15 quart model 1753 container. Here's how it works. On the back, I've cut out a slot where the extruder feed tubes and the electricity uh, wires come in. And all that you do is you take it, drop it on top, and that's all. Uh, it's held on by the uh, lip on the top of the replicator. This, this cannot vibrate off. It can't go anywhere. Um, I don't have any problems at all. I just pop it on there and that's it. Now yes, there is some air that can come out through the back here. And it is kind of warm. This whole thing heats up, by the way. But I don't think that that amount of air is enough to cause me any concerns, especially because here in my room, there's no air coming from that direction. So this sits here like this. And it made a big improvement in my print quality once I enclosed the, the printer. To finish up, I'll just walk the camera around so you can take a look. It's actually harder to describe than it is to do this. It's not difficult at all. Just get those three sheets of acrylic in the right sizes, buy a top in the right size, and uh, cut it up. It's very easy to do. So I'll show you here the sides first. And uh, you can do things. I, I've left these uh, pointy corners on. You can soften those up if you like. You can see how it rests along those bolts on the bottom. Of course, I cut it narrow enough so that the SD card slot was still accessible. And that just pops off just like this. Here's the front. You can see I have it going down all the way to the bottom. If you wanted to, you can you could make a cutout for the button, or you can take the whole corner off of the piece. I just left it on there. You will have to make it a little taller than the top edge so you can pass through some type of a system for a hanger. There's all kinds of ways you can even design a little plastic clip and print it. And again, I left these corners on. It would be nice if one day I came back and cut those off, rounded them off, maybe sanded them smooth. Just get rid of that sharp edge. On the left side, same thing as the right side. And I'll show you, in case you have um, any reason for some more, uh, sometimes this might vibrate, make some noise. I found that these magnets, you take a magnet, you pop it right there on the bolt head, and it'll really keep, uh, stop any kind of movement at all if you do happen to have some vibration. I don't need the magnets at all. And then the top, okay? The top just barely clears the top of the feed tubes. And it rests like this. It does have some play, but it doesn't move around when I'm printing. And I'll show you the back. Ooh, there's the new silver ABS I've been trying. I need some more natural. That spool's just about done. You can see that the printer's got a little bit of room to move, but these wooden blocks keep it from moving forward, and the edge here stops it from coming off the side. It sits on just like that. So thanks for watching. 
If you do build a closure for your MakerBot, leave a comment or send me a note. I'd like to see it, and I'd like to hear about the improvement. This was the best thing I've done for the print quality on my, my replicator. Again, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and click on subscribe. You'll receive notification of new videos as they come out. Thanks again. Have a great day.